Okay, so good uh, afternoon, uh, students. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you uh, on this tape around this uh, time of Corona. I am already in a, uh, how is it called, in a, in a self-isolation period, but uh, life must still go on, and uh, uh, that will mean that lectures still must go on. Uh, this is uh, uh, MIFI 562. Um, the first lecture focusing on um, ethics in the conduct of business. Uh, in the conduct of business, one asks um, what uh, businesses are and how does businesses look like. And uh, usually we uh, talk about businesses having a certain kind of economic character. And this economic character usually would... Uh, have certain, um, you know, distinguishing features. When we say an entity has a certain uh, economic character, uh, it means that we, we usually have what we call buyers and sellers because there is a certain transaction that will be taking place. Uh, there will be somebody who is desiring to have something to buy and there will be somebody else who also will be uh, ready to have what the person needs in the form of selling it to, to, to the individual. In the same way, in every uh, uh, business setup, even in organizations, you will have people who are in need of certain kind of skill sets, uh, a certain kind of, um, you know, labor. And there are people who are also ready to sell their labor, you know, to, to such people. In which case, we have employers and employee. These two characters uh, usually uh, describe the economic character of uh, every business setup. There is another character which uh, uh, may interest you. This character is the fact that every business takes place in a certain organizations. They say an organization uh, depicts some form of social relationship. Usually, these relationships are glued together formally. Uh, by certain bond of power. So you will see that hierarchically, you will see uh, organizations arranged uh, from one individual having to relate to another individual who also having to relate to another individual. These relationships are usually, as I said, glued by certain bond of power and certain formal system. So at the base of every organization, you would want to have somebody who relates to a higher authority, and that higher authority also relates to much more higher authority. So uh, I have a boss who has a boss who also has a boss who himself has a boss. And so that relationship is actually you know, brought together by a formal system, and as I indicated earlier on, a, a bond of power. Power, they say, is the ability to you know, influence the behavior of uh, uh, people, even against their resistance. So uh, your boss may influence your behavior uh, against your own wishes, just because you are bounded to uh, some kind of uh, relate to him in, 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 in a certain uh, power relationship. Uh, others uh, have defined organizations as... Um, uh, uh, you know, a hierarchical system functionally defined in terms of positions, and these positions are glued together to achieve some organizational goals, as has been indicated earlier on. Now, it would therefore tend to uh, 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 seem like in every uh, business setup where organizations are established, you are likely to have certain relationships, and when these relationships are established, there is uh, always the ethical issue or ethical behavior that may uh, uh, occur. And so in business setups, we usually look at ethics from uh, various levels of decision making. It could be at the individual level, it could be at the organizational level, or better still, it could be at what we call the business systems level. Largely, uh, business decisions take place at all these levels. 
maybe you would want to take each of the levels and understand what actually goes on within these levels. First, uh, I will take the individual level of decision making. And this individual level of decision making is actually uh, when an individual himself need to make a decision which may either be ethical or unethical. A key question in this situation is what do I do to meet my need? So let's take for instance there are these two individuals best friends Akusia and uh, Adua. Akusia is married to uh, Kofi. Kofi works in the same organization as um, uh, 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 Adua and uh, Kofi begin to make you know advances at Adua and uh, Adua is left to probably you know make a decision for himself whether to go to the advances of the uh, uh, her, her friend's you know wife uh, her, her friend's uh, husband sorry or to you know uh, report him to her friend all these situation has dark consequences it may end up you know uh, destroying a certain marriage or it may end up soaring the relationship between Adwa and her friend. Whatever decision that the uh, lady takes is actually at an individual base, and so it becomes an individual uh, uh, decision. This is the point where we see ethics also coming in. So whatever decision the individual takes, as far as whether to go to the advances or not to becomes ethical or not but the key question as i indicated earlier on is what do i do to meet my own needs now just in case uh the lady moves on to report the issue to uh, the hr department then decision making has actually transcend from just the individual level to the organizational level at this point we all know and are aware that organizations are governed by certain policies, certain rules and regulations, some systems and structures. This policies, systems and uh, operational activities and structures are usually put in place to ensure that the organization, you know, operates smoothly uh, to achieving its objective. So at every point in time, whatever decision that is taken at the organizational level is taken with recourse to the organizational policies, rules and regulation, ethics of conduct and all that. In an organization where, uh, for instance, this issue of sexual harassment takes place, the organizational policy may be used to guide the decision that needs to be taken. For instance, a disciplinary committee may be set up and the appropriate sanction, you know, activated against whoever is the culprit. At that point, the decision that is taken is actually taken at the uh, organizational level. The same applies to the business systems level. Uh, business system has to do with uh, the industry practices and uh, economic systems that we have. So, just like you know, industry is uh, a collection of firms uh, that seem to produce the same goods and services, uh, products and services. And these industries have their own rules and regulations and policies that bind the industry. And so, when an issue directly affects the success or otherwise of a company from within a certain business system, decision that is taken uh, alongside this area will better be classified as a decision taken at the business system level or at the industry level. So sometimes certain behavior of companies may end up, you know, uh, being classified as unethical and therefore a certain business systems uh, requirement and rules and regulations may be activated against such, you know, uh, individual uh, uh, companies. So you'd realize that uh, every decision we take as organizations, every uh, decision we take as uh, individual employees, and every decision that we take at the industry level 
is usually going to be binded by certain rules and regulation and therefore uh, could be subjected to what we may classify as ethical or unethical. There are two schools of thought when it comes to uh, law and ethics. Usually people say that uh, law usually uh, takes place or prevails within public life. So in public, people tend to behave in a way to meet the laws of the nation. For instance, right now, we have been asked to stay at home and that policemen and military men are out there to guard the streets unless it is so needful and you are considered to be within the essential services you might not take it easy when you meet them on the streets but as much as possible if anybody dares go out there he or she is going to behave in a way that will meet the requirement of the current you know dispensation where we are required to self-quarantine so usually we say that uh, law prevails in public life in public we may seem to at 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 every possibility do what is right in the eyes of the public beyond that the other school of thought believe that ethics is usually a matter of privacy so it means that whatever you do in private you are likely to subject that into you know some form of ethics or not but usually you would uh, tend to agree with me that in our own closet, the things we do may end up being, you know, classified as ethical or not. For instance, for instance, we would tend to ask the question that what we are doing in our closet, in our private places, if our relation, if our relative, if my teacher, if my daughter, if my uncle see this on television, will I be happy? If you wouldn't be happy, then it means what you are doing may necessarily be unethical. So usually uh, the description has been that law embodies the ethics of business. So it means that the source of law is ethics. So ethical rule that apply to businesses have been, you know, codified by legislators into what we call law. So sometimes we face the decision of whether to be ethical or to be legal. Now, in terms of uh, getting to question whether to be ethical or to be legal, uh, the onus is on us to decide. And at this point, we tend to have, uh, be, be, we would be describing ourselves to have fallen in what we call an ethical dilemma. A certain writer indicated that in law, a man is guilty when he violates the rights of others. But in ethics, he is guilty if he even thinks of doing so. So it means that, you know, sometimes you don't need to fault a certain law. Your thinking alone may end up criminalizing you. The Bible even says it, that hey, uh, once you even give it a thought, you would have committed the sense. There's been that.